Welcome back to episode number 35 of ECW Cyber Slam in the week where we have gone up from regional level to cult level. TNA also managed this on the back of their Bound for Glory, the biggest pay-per-view of their year, where Samoa Joe finally lost the NWA World Heavyweight Championship to Tiger Raj Singh, better known as the WWE's Jinder Mahal. So big things going on over there. They've put their world title on a 20-year-old. Let's see if we can build November to Remember to an equally impressive moment. We begin with a look back at the brutal attack of CM Punk at the hands of Rhino, which closed out last week's show. CM Punk was hit with three consecutive goals from Rhino, who stood over the ECW World Television Champion to end the show. The commentators put over that CM Punk has sustained serious injuries to his ribs, and there are question marks over whether he will be able to compete at November to Remember. Tonight, Rhino is in action against Johnny Cashmere following their confrontation last week. We'll also hear from Homicide and Low Key, eight days out from their ECW World Championship Challenge at November to Remember. In the ring, we begin with Brent Albright and Chad Collier, that new tag team against Paul Burchill and Steve Carino. It's a decent wrestling match, it didn't have much heat, and it's a surprising result. Quite complicated how we get there. C.D. Anderson and Stevie Richards try and get involved to cheat. They target Chad Collier, who is not the legal man. Balls Mahoney comes out. They brawl on the outside. Steve Carino joins in. Basically, everybody's in that brawl. While that's happening, Terry Funk comes and targets Paul Burchill, his opponent for November to remember. Pal driving him on the concrete. He's out of contention. Balls Mahoney and Terry Funk then brawl with C.W. Anderson and Stevie Richards. This allows Brent Albright and Chad Collier a two-on-one situation with Steve Carino. Brent Albright picking up a huge, surprising, upset victory over Steve Carino. Carino the best in-ring performer in a decent match. 47 Ds not too bad. Brent and Chad not doing particularly well. But again, decent mid-card ratings. And it is more to continue that storyline with Terry Funk and Paul Burchill. After the match, the faces all stand tall at the top of the ramp. The extreme horsemen, particularly Steve Carino, furious and regrouping in the ring, angry about what's just happened. Not only had Carino been pinned in shocking fashion, but Paul Burchill had been hit with a pile driver on the outside by Terry Funk. If there was one positive they could take, it was that Paul Burchill had somehow made it back to his feet and was all the more ready to fight Terry Funk. We then get the first of those pre-recorded interviews, this one with Homicide, the segment designed to give an in-depth answer to who is Homicide. We don't really know that much about him on a personal level. He's unscripted and he's allowed to talk about his story from the streets to the main event of an ECW pay-per-view before going into his storyline issues with the ECW originals. Homicide explains that the hustle was formed to save ECW from itself and while Rob Van Dam can still go, there's no question about that. All around the locker room, he sees a bunch of deadbeats and has-beens who aren't fit to lace his boots. RVD's position at the top as the original hole in the ECW Championship legitimises every single one of them still picking up a paycheck years after they should have been put out to pasture. At November to remember, his first task is to face Rob Van Dam, and when he beats him, there will be a guaranteed new ECW Champion. He doesn't know if that will be him or his brother Low Key but he does know that the title is coming home with the hustle. Homicide improvising well, but it's not a great segment for your main event storyline, and it does lose us heat. Disappointing. Hopefully the next segment can bring us back up. Again, RVD improvising well in a much better segment. Balanced against Homicide's interview, RVD is live with Jade in the back, and he gives his feelings about going into November to Remember's Double Jeopardy match. RVD says that he's heard a lot from the hustle, he's heard them run their mouths for nine straight months, and he wouldn't expect them to stop now. Since episode one of Cyberslam, Homicide has been the mouthpiece, and every word that's come out of his mouth has been pure and utter bullshit. RVD being champion has no bearing on the rest of the originals and they're here because like him, there would be no ECW without them. Terry Funk, Tommy Dreamer, Sabu, Raven and of course, Rob Van Dam. At November to remember, Homicide is going into the match with his grand plan, his huge vision of leaving. But as always, the hustle will leave with their tails between their legs and RVD will be the world champion. We then get the second match of the night, a complete one-sided squash match, not very good. Kevin Furtick picking up a win against Ray Gordy, who used to be part of Elijah's entourage. His tag team partner, Chris Cage, who also used to be part of that group, gets involved. Furtick essentially winning a handicap match, 
despite Cage not technically being in the match, a one-sided dominant win. And after the match, we continue their storyline, Kevin Furtick and Shelley Martinez standing tall. Elijah Burke comes to the top of the ramp, but goes no further, and he is joined by Angel Williams. Elijah Burke says that this has gone on for far too long, and Furtick has gotten away without getting his ass kicked in that whole time. At November to remember, this has to end when Kevin Furtick and Shelley Martinez faces Elijah Burke and Angel Williams. Loki is then interviewed in the same style as Homicides from earlier. The two speak very differently about the main event of November to remember. Keith says that he isn't a man of many words, he's a man of facts. He puts over that he is a former ROH world champion and since coming to ECW he has 10 wins, 3 losses and 1 draw. He has been pinned only 2 times in 9 months and he's only getting better. He tells the interviewer to find one man in ECW with a better record than him. He's beat Sabu before. He's beat Rob Van Dam before. And they are just the tip of the iceberg of the names that he has put down in an ECW ring. At November to remember, it's double jeopardy for Sabu and then for Rob Van Dam because he will be the next ECW world champion and despite struggling going off script Loki does give a decent segment there and we go into again what is supposed to be Sabu's reaction to Loki's words however before he can say anything Sabu is jumped by Homicide and Sonny Siaki Siaki scares off Jade as he lays into Sabu Rovan Dam coming as quickly as he can to even the odds the brawl continues the two sides eventually being pulled apart well it has been halted for now it's clear that tensions are still running high and it'd be very unsurprising if this doesn't boil over once again. We then get a video package prior to the main event, a recap looking at the rivalry between Tommy Dreamer and Raven, more in depth than we have done previously, before switching focus to their tag team title match at November to remember. They will challenge the Havana Pitbulls, who will be in action next week on ECW Cyberslam. That main event, pretty disappointing, a 49D+. I did hope that Rhino would be able to drag Kashmir up to something better than that. He clearly couldn't. It's a wild brawl around ringside that is described as a poor match. Johnny Kashmir showing a lot of resilience, a lot of fight, but Rhino is clearly level above him and a gore is enough to pick up the win. After the match, the commentators put over that resilience of Johnny Kashmir, but he has been destroyed by Rhino, once again showing CM Punk what he would be in for if he is able to compete in November to remember. While he wasn't even expected at the building for the show, CM Punk did come out from the back, defiantly confronting Rhino in the ring. Punk was clearly struggling, holding his injured ribs as he walked down the ramp, but wasted no time in throwing the first shot at Rhino. Looking for revenge for what happened last week, CM Punk was running on pure adrenaline as he threw shot after shot at Rhino. He showed no signs of letting up as he took the fight to his pay-per-view opponent. However, it only took one shot from Rhino to stop him in his tracks. Rhino hitting a single hand to the ribs of CM Punk, which sent the champion stumbling backwards. Rhino then followed up with another brutal gore, which put Punk in even more pain. Pain. Rhino then ripped the shirt off CM Punk who was on the canvas revealing that the ECW World Television Champion's ribs had been taped up he was clearly in a bad way Rhino standing tall dominant once more to end Cyberslam so the show gets a C-55 I'm pretty relieved there I was worried we'd drop back into those D plus ratings we are at cult now so we do have to keep those ratings higher we do have a higher standard that is expected of us increasing our popularity in 41 regions and we finally got to that go home show next week's episode the final episode before november to remember i did hope to get here quicker but very soon we'll be getting into that november to remember pay-per-view the thing we've been building for for the last three months and i can't wait to get to the pay-per-view <laughs>